Welcome to the 20th uh, version of Rockwell Automation's TechEd. Um, you know, Keith was up here and talked about folks being here. While I feel like a, like I think I'm one of the oldest veterans, um, and uh, in many ways, um, but this is truly one of the events I like, and it's because the folks who attend this event are the folks who really impact the automation and information environments. That's the greatest thing about this, and so I think this year you're going to see a lot of the energy and innovation. Um, that we have in the sessions, as well in the demonstration that's going to come right after my presentation. There's a lot of things uh, that we're going to show you this week. Uh, digital business, uh, intelligent assets, scalable analytics, and connected services, just to name a few. Blake mentioned those uh, here recently. And with the introduction of new business models, we can take advantage of all those things uh, whenever we want and wherever we need them. So let's talk a little bit about the opportunities all those things afford all of us. So digital transformation or harnessing the power of the Internet of Things exposes a wealth of data. But it's often still up to the individual to interpret the, the data and make those good decisions. Or, or is it, or does it really have to be? And so to achieve you know, these kind of results, it takes more than just a couple data scientists. It requires a lot of domain expertise, intelligent devices, tools, infrastructure, all to piece that data together to get to the information and present it in a way that operators, um, managers, business leaders can use that information to make decisions. So this is the power of the Internet of Things in digital transformation. So everybody's heard of the Internet of Things, at least I hope you've all heard of the Internet of Things, but how about the industrial Internet of Things? How about a show of hands? Okay, okay, so, well, it's a good thing you're all here. Um, so, but today, today we're really fortunate and we're fortunate because whether you realize it or not, we have a whole audience full of experts on the industrial internet of things. In fact, I would go so far to say as the industrial internet of thing rubber hits the manufacturing road right here in this room. We've all helped uh, create the automation that enables the power of information and created the access roads to better decision making. And so it's your understanding of the automation environment that enables the information environment. And so I don't know if you've ever thought of it that way, but you're posed in the best situation to take advantage of all that information. So you can help your organization understand the operation of a machine, understand what it takes to improve its reliability, maybe its throughput or quality, and it's all about combining the power of control and information technologies together. So, so the real question is, and, and Blake kind of ended his presentation with this, how do we simplify that approach? Well, well, there's good news, and, and the best news is the source of most of that data, the sensors, the motor controllers, the automation systems, and the production systems, holds all that untapped data. And we know how to make this data meaningful by adding context. Remember, data without context isn't information. So because most of this data, or much of the data, is our data, right? It's in the products and solutions that we provide to market, and all the systems that you put together, it's easy to get at it. And so that contextualized data or information, along with the right analytics, can help all of us diagnose potential issues, predict future trends, and optimize our machines and factories. And so you know that much of that data has been available for years, right? Uh, Keith talked about uh, tech ed of, of 20 years ago, and I'm sure some of us were probably here. Um, but the problem is it takes a lot of engineering to get at it. And so the real question is, how do we simplify that and make it easy to get at that information? And we're going to talk a little bit about that here, but you're also going to see that in the demonstration we do later. So, so what are the greatest benefits? So think of the benefits in your organization. Think of that outcome or that, that key action that, that Blake mentioned. So, so we've been talking to customers a lot about this, and we've been conducting pilots, and you saw that in the, the recommendations that we had. And during every one of those pilots, we learned something. And so the one thing that's true, though, is every customer is looking for real business outcomes. They're looking for things that are going to impact their business positively. And so thinking about what the priorities they give us, there's really three that are, are really big. The first one is operational productivity. The second one is asset reliability and maintenance. And the third is risk management. Now, operational productivity is really about optimization. Uh, it could be order execution. It could be production processes. It could be overall equipment effectiveness. Asset and reliability information is really about lifecycle support. It's about systems and assets. It's about reducing downtime and about improving the meantime to repair. And finally, the last one, enterprise risk, 
um, is really an area that has many, many opportunities. Uh, it could be plant-wide safety, it could be information security, uh, quality, or maybe ensuring uh, compliance in a validated industry. And so there's many, many opportunities uh, to impact operations in all of our environments. And so, so what's the plan? What are we gonna do to, to, to take care of this? The plan is simple, simple in nature, and we think that's important. We really wanna create a scalable environment. Um, and, and I've said scalable a number of times, but, but what do I really wanna, wanna do there? And what does that really mean? So we wanna be able to collect, analyze, and act on data at all levels of the information architecture. As you remember, if the automation layer and all those sensors and devices are part of the origin, we have opportunities at every layer of that architecture to have positive impacts. And so each one is a source of data, and, and no plant has, has only one source of data. And so our scalable offering needs to utilize and manage data at every one of those layers. It could be a simple device, or it could be a very complex system across the enterprise. And so those, those pieces of information are important for this offering. And so we believe a scalable offering of appliances and applications or, or apps will allow you to focus and solve problems and then benefit from the outcomes quickly. We think that's important too, is to see those real business results. And so as you move up that information architecture, you can solve different business problems. That's why we're building an open ecosystem where data sources are harmonized in an environment where analytics can be utilized and in many ways information can be shared across those applications. So the open ecosystem is not only for Aqual Automation apps, but it's intended to have our partners and our customers create solutions of their own. So this new portfolio of scalable solutions is really the basis of our information strategy. For the past decade, if you think about it, we've been creating the infrastructure of the industrial internet of things. Smart connected assets and open networks enabled that, and now this scalable information platform can be built on top of that to produce more business outcomes. So there's a few key elements of that portfolio that we're gonna bring to market. Um, the first one is a set of scalable applications from devices to the enterprise, as I mentioned, a portfolio of analytics to make those applications smarter, and then access to information that can be shared between individuals and allow them to collaborate and be more effective. All that, all that covered with a service offering to help us accelerate time to value. So what we like to do now is spend a little bit of time and look at how that portfolio is coming together. Now, running a plant's operations is critical to the production quality and productivity of a plant. And as I mentioned earlier, many customers see tremendous value with starting with a specific business challenge. It really helps you stay focused and it allows you to make progress quickly. You know, challenges can be production management, performance management, or, or even quality. And so what we've done is we began assembling a portfolio of fit for purpose applications. Uh, what does that mean? That means applications that are ready out of the box, easy to implement, and easy to, 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 excuse me, to deploy. And so, so we created those applications from the suite of information products that we have today. Some of the things that, that customers have found that they resonated and they were more popular. And so now we've repackaged them into a set of standalone applications. Again, easy to deploy and can be deployed incrementally. The whole point here is to speed time to market and time to value. And it provides a standardized approach that allows you to do rollouts across multiple lines or multiple plants. So this week at TechEd, I hope you have an opportunity to take a look at those and see how easy it is to drive that time to value. Now, examples are always best, and so what I'm gonna do is show you an example of those fit-for-purpose applications. This particular one is a company called Anderson Windows. Now, the return of the housing market, and, and I'm sure you've seen this in the news, has really caused, caused a lot of demand out in the marketplace. And Anderson Windows, uh, being one of the highly regarded and recommended, in fact, I believe, uh, a survey this last year said they're the most recommended window manufacturer in the world. So Anderson chose to build a new facility to meet its increasing demand. So right now they're moving around production between facilities and it's just not efficient. So to meet this customer's outcome, there's a couple things that need to happen. Uh, better materials visibility, better consumption visibility, um, equipment performance and what was required. And so what Anderson wanted to do is, is kind of put together an and out of the box, off the shelf uh, solution to speed their time to market. Because remember that, that market demand had been driving their business for quite some time now. And so Anderson selected our fit for purpose production management application and they chose Brock Solutions as their integrator. Now Brock has been in the automation business for a long time and is also really capable of deploying information solutions. 
And what happened is that fit for purpose application got deployed, took them less than six months to stand it up, and Anderson's been seeing a number of financial returns very quickly. And so let's give you an example of what some of those are. First one is just more visibility. More visibility to material consumption, more visibility to production. Uh, the second one was faster setup times and line setup times. That's a really big deal when you're in a high demand situation. And finally, a simplified scheduling system. And so the whole concept of these fit for purpose applications is to simplify the deployment and speed time to value. We talk a lot about smart assets. Uh, in fact, we use the term um, self-aware a number of times. Remember, self-aware assets can understand and take action on the processes they're a part of. And they do that automatically because they're intelligent devices. And so a great example of that is we've been building analytic capability into our portfolio of kinetics motion drives, as well as our family of PowerFlex drives. And so those are some of the smartest assets in the automation environment. Smart systems are different. Systems are self-aware. And these capabilities are, are exactly what Factory Talk Analytics is focused on. So it's a scalable analytic offering that helps us drive productivity on a machine or a line. In fact, Factory Talk Analytics for devices, and that's part of the demonstration you're going to see today, actually runs on an appliance and has a chatbot we call Shelby. And so you can interact with not only the analytic, but also the equipment. And you'll see that today. Our device analytics does something really unique. It goes out into your system and automatically discovers your assets and devices and gives you pre-configured operations and maintenance reports. And so it allows you to get access to that value of information automatically. We also release factory talk analytics for machines. Analytics for machines is a little different. It enables OEMs to monitor the health and diagnostics of their equipment. It takes advantage of our factory talk cloud to do that and does it in a very standardized way. So even folks who don't have big infrastructures or programming groups can take advantage of analytics right there at their machines. Advanced process control and model predictive troll is kind of making a comeback in the automation world. Um, you know, it provides really interesting predictive and prescriptive analytics that can help you manage your machines and your equipment. And so those two capabilities will be joining that factory talk um, analytics suite over the next few months. So hopefully you have the opportunity this week to take a look at each one of those. And I mentioned that we're going to show those in our demonstration here in just a few minutes. Um, but the sessions at TechEd can help you apply those capabilities today. So we talked about the Internet of Things. And we give you another example from a customer here. And we talked about the convergence of IT and OT, the operational technology and the information technology. Um, this particular story is about a company called Metso. Metso is a provider of mining equipment services and process expertise across the life cycle of mining operations from the pit to the end, end products and, and shippable uh, solutions. So what we did here is we have a group called the Connected Services Team. And what they wound up doing with Metso is running a pilot. And the pilot was a remote monitoring pilot. And they picked a site uh, where Metso had sold some equipment actually in Africa on a crusher. I don't know if you've ever seen a mining operation, but the crushing operations are a really important part of that. It's uh, basically making big rocks into little rocks. Um, and so every one of these mining operations around the world has this. And, and the problem was Metso didn't have a lot of visibility um, to their operations or their machines. And so it was very difficult to not only predict the operation, but also understand what possible design changes they could have. So, so what we did is we took a look at, at one of those assets. And, and monitored for a period of time and really understood its operation. And as a result of that, um, Metso was able to make some recommendations to the user on how to improve its operation and actually extend its life cycle. And so, so the goals of that, that activity were really machine availability, um, predicting downtime, and then scheduling maintenance before the downtime occurs, because if the crusher goes down, the mine kind of shuts down. Um, and then hopefully in the end, making uh, recommendations and design improvements to the equipment. So, as a result of that, um, basically, from a success standpoint, uh, Metzl was able to operate, uh, op optimize, let's say that three times fast, uh, the operations of the crushing operations. And so as a result of those findings, they made a decision to start to connect and monitor all the assets they have out in the field. Right? And so the information from one of those assets is important, but for many of them, will give them better insights into the actual operations of the equipment, but how to design new equipment as well. So, we talked a lot about information, scalable analytics, and focused business outcomes. But what about the folks who are working in these capabilities today? Let's talk about collaboration. Um, collaboration is important not only for workforce, but also equipment. Now, 
many of you have likely heard about our new application called Factory Talk Team One. And if you haven't, this is a perfect week to do that here at TechEd because you're going to see it in a variety of places. Team One's really a unique app. Um, it's a collaboration tool, not just for people, but also for equipment and machines. And so since we've deployed Team One, we've really learned a lot about how folks are using it. And it's really created a bit of a buzz with our customers because it's really delivering great value. Um, so we'll explore Team One a little bit deeper during the uh, demonstration they give today. And we'll give you a feel for, for how those factory talk analytics and Team One interact together on a machine and what value that gives to the user. So the world of, of the industrial internet of things and digital business is bringing us into a new exciting future. Our scalable analytics and information offerings will continue to evolve and we'll make every effort to keep those simple and make those easy to use and, and try to speed that time to value. We're committed to being a leader, not only in control, but information management and a trusted advisor. We'd like to help you reduce the risk and take the most of your industrial investments. And if it's not clear to you where to start, our Rockwell Automation Connected Services team would love to help, as well as our partner network. These are trusted partners with expertise in offering consultation on how to get started, all the way down to full delivery capabilities. They have a variety of offerings, offerings like asset management and reliability services, remote monitor monitoring and cloud, lifecycle support services, information infrastructure and security services, where they can do consultative assessments, pre-engineered solutions, and even remediations. And so, Take some time this week to learn more about those offerings, both from Rockwell Automation and our partners, and they'll really get you jump-started and help you drive more value quickly.